everyone to a brand new episode of Virtual Coffee. My name is Alexa Collier and on this podcast I sit down and speak with accomplished and innovative early career professionals and small business owners. Now with me today is the founder and owner of Maddie's Bling Shop, Maddie herself. Maddie is a 12-year-old entrepreneur who sells handcrafted and customized earrings. She also partners with local businesses and donates parts of her proceeds to those businesses. I had an awesome conversation with Maddie as well as her mother, and I'm happy that you're listening to this episode. Thank you so much for your support, and if you'd like to further support the podcast, I'd appreciate if you could rate and review Virtual Coffee on the Apple Podcasts app. You can also find us on social media on Instagram and Facebook. It's at Virtual Coffee Podcast. Thank you so much for your support and happy listening. Let's dive into Maddie's story. Welcome, Maddie. Thank you so much for talking to me today. Hi. (laughs) Hi, I'm so happy to have you on the podcast and um, to talk about Maddie's Bling Shop. So I'd first like to know, where did the idea for Maddie's Bling Shop come from? How did you think of this idea? Well, really, I just got extremely bored over quarantine. It was just like some way to cure my boredom and to make a little bit of money would be to start a business. And at first I was going to do slime and it was way more expensive. And then um, also not a lot of people would probably buy it. So I just switched to jewelry and I did my research and I put my money into it. And that's really how it started. That's really cool. Yeah. Slime used to be really popular, right? Yeah. Is it is it still popular? Not so much anymore. It's still in stores and people still sell it, but it's not as popular. Yeah. I still do with it and make it, but <laughs> it's not as popular. Yeah, that makes sense. And I, I like how you did your your research, right? And you realized that the slime materials are a little more expensive. So you decided to go for jewelry. I think that's really smart. So can you describe to our audience the the types of jewelry you make and what really are the products that you sell? I have a couple things because Mm -hmm. I have a lot right now. Right now, my main things are glass, cabochon studs, and those ones, oh, and they can also be in dangles. Mm -hmm. So those can be um, customized too. So you could do like a picture of your dog or a picture of your cat or a picture of your mom or something like that. And then I also have... Jersey cabochon studs and dinglies and those are just really sparkly colorful earrings then I have mermaid scale cabochon studs mystery bags and um, some sets and my sets I have a BFF set which is a cookie and milk and it's a <laughs> BFF on the bottom and then I have a birthday girl set which is basically I came up with that idea because it was my best friend's birthday and her favorite color was purple. So I made a purple glass cabochon stud and it said birthday girl. And then I put a purple jersey with it. And that was how the birthday girl set came up. You So you have a entire store, like an entire <laughs> jewelry line. Those are so many products. That's awesome. Where do you mainly sell your products? I know you go to some farmer's markets here locally. Do you ship them anywhere? Yes, I ship just the United States. Okay. In the United States. And do you go to a lot of farmers markets? Are you there like every weekend? Um, I've only been to one right now. It's the mm-hmm. Wendell Farmers Market, and I'm there every other weekend. But I'm planning on going to a Christmas market and possibly another farmers market. And you just started this this year, right? Yeah, I started in May. Wow, in May. That's awesome. <laughs> Did you know how to make? these earrings and this jewelry before this or did you have to learn all this you know in May everything I had my mom made me watch multiple YouTube videos (laughs) about what the right stuff I needed because everyone had like a different technique everyone had like the same supplies but it was kind of a different technique so I had to watch and figure out which one would be probably the easiest for me and then we just got those supplies and then the first time I made them I like watched the videos to help me make them Wow. And now you just know how to how to do them? Yeah, it got easier. Yeah. 
That's really impressive. So you had no experience with jewelry making before May. <laughs> no. Wow. Wow. And did you have any other other help? Because even your packaging, like the way you sell your earrings is is so professional. Like how'd you come up with that? And who's been really helping you? Or has it really been a lot on on your own? Well, my mom helps me a little bit. She's addressed my bubble mailers a couple times because I've been really busy and we'd rush around. So she'd address my bubble mailers while I'd like package them. And then she's taken a couple pictures for me, like the pictures of me. And she also um, does the hashtags on my posts because I'm not good with hashtags. (laughs) And then the packaging, she helped me just a little bit because she was like, you don't want them to break and you don't want to just stick it in there. So you should try tissue paper. So at first it was just little card stocks and I just poked holes and put my earrings in there and I put them in little like sacks and I wrapped those up in tissue paper and then I upgraded everything and now they're in baggies and then wrapped up in tissue paper and they're wrapped up differently. Yeah, no, that, that makes sense. And that's really what, having a small business and starting a business is all about right like experimenting and constantly trying new things and constantly upgrading right and just along the way seeing how you can get better and better that's awesome so do you i saw you know on your social medias do you partner with some like organizations i think you did you partner with red barn rescue here Yes, for the month of August, we I partnered up with Red Barn Rescue, and that's a no-kill dog shelter. And basically, um, I'm selling paw print dangly and stud glass cabochons. And every a dollar from every pair purchase will be donated to them. And my goal is 150, and right now I'm I'm at like 70 dollars. Nice. So you're almost there. Yeah. <laughs> Very cool. Do you have plans to partner with more organizations in the future or just starting out with, with Red Barn for right now? Well, I was thinking that if this goes good, I might try different organizations. So not only dogs, but like maybe the LGBTQ plus community. Mm. There's just so many different things that you could do. Right. To give back to your community. Yeah. yeah. Awesome. Yeah, and it seems you you want to partner with organizations that maybe mean something to you or your family, right? And 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 places and people you want to support and help out. Yeah. So I'm want to know what it's been like to start a business at such a young age, right? Because you are such a young entrepreneur, and that's absolutely incredible. I'm just curious: have you faced a lot of challenges or do you think being so young has helped you I don't know just what's it like being such a young entrepreneur who's starting her own business well at times it can be very rough and challenging Mm -hmm. but I don't know because I started FBLA I'm in a lot of clubs at school um and I was in FBLA and that kind of helped me because it helped us like deal with money and stuff because we had like movie nights and we would sell candy and popcorn and that kind of helped us with money and that's that's what helped me but some challenges I faced I have three so far a couple times I've made some earrings and they've gotten messed up and then I try and fix them and I just make um ruin them I like make them worse and I happen to have not enough supplies for more So my customers have to wait a little longer than they were supposed to. And it just frustrates me because I I feel bad. And I don't know. I don't know. It just frustrates me. And then I've had, I make big batches of earrings, like my paw print earrings. I'll make big batches of those for my farmer's market. And then at the very last minute when I'm packaging them, I see some that are messed up and then I have to remake them. That's what makes me really mad. Yeah. And then it's just, I also want to still be a kid and like have fun and FaceTime my friends and do my hobbies. And sometimes my business can get in the way of that. And I have to like try and tell my friends, I can't right now. I'll do it later. I can't do this. And it, I just feel like I let them down sometimes. And they're probably like, 
or you always focus on your business or something like that. But sometimes I just feel like my business gets in the way of me still trying to be a kid. Yeah, thank you for sharing that and and your perspective on that. I I can imagine, right? You know, you have this passion to to start your own business and and make this jewelry and sell it and give back to your community. And that takes a lot of time and effort. You had to learn how to first make all these earrings and then packaging. I can't, I just, I don't even know all that goes into it, right? I'm sure it's a ton of work. Um, so how, how have you been balancing working on your business and also, you know, being a kid, like you said, do you, do you have any things that you do to make sure that you don't just work 24 seven on Maddie's bling shop? Well, sometimes I have very, very dull weeks. So sometimes I go a week without any purchases, which gives me time to, for like half of the week, I do what I want. And then the other half I get ready for a farmer's market or any orders that will come up. I make sure everything is still in stock and all that. And then other times I'm really, really busy. And that's when my mom helps me with the bubble mailers. And she helps me cut out my thank you cards. And I sign them. Nice. But sometimes I'm really busy. Other times I'm really slow. But it depends on what it is. Because right. this donation organization, it definitely speeded up my mm. business. I've gotten a lot of orders. I have been loaded with work. (laughs) Sometimes I'll finish my work. I'll just stay up all day and I'll stay up until like 12 o'clock and I'll get everything done so then I can have three hours the next day to do it. Yeah, that's it seems like you're still able to balance your time, which is is very, you know, mature and professional. And that's what I really love about your business is it's such a professional, really well put together business, right? Like this isn't just a a lemonade stand outside your house, right? It's a very professional business with packaging and online orders and shipment and handmade items, customized items, donating to organizations, like such a, just such a professional business. I, I love it. And where do you sell your jewelry? Do you, do you sell online on a website or Instagram? Well, right now I don't have a website. Okay. Off of Instagram and Facebook, but I'm hoping sometime in the future I can start a website maybe really soon. Cause I think I've gotten enough money to do like the customizable websites, not Etsy or eBay, but like Shopify, like stuff like that instead of Etsy and eBay. I feel like I have enough money. I just need a little bit more so all my money does not go into the website. <laughs> right. Yeah. yeah. No, that's that's smart. And I, I love that as a next step. Do you think, would you try to put together the website or would you get help from like friends or family or, or someone else? Well, I feel like I might need a little bit of help from my mom mm-hmm. <laughs> because I may need help figuring out what to do because I don't really know how to put together a website. Um, I know that you need to have like however much you have in stock, which that will keep me very busy because right now I just make like two of every color of my jerseys or two of every maybe like pineapples for my glass or cabochons. I'll just make like two pineapples, two American flags, stuff like that. But if I were to start a website, I'd have to make like 10 and then put how much I have in stock and then take images and I just feel like I might need a little help because that will be overwhelming. I love your your attitude about your business and your mindset because you know your answer could have been yeah I'll just I'll get help from someone who already knows how to make a website but instead you say yeah I'm going to try to do it and I might need help but I can learn how to do it right like you want to do it yourself and that's such a entrepreneur mindset I think that's it's just so awesome to see in especially someone who's who's so young and already has success in their own business so you mentioned you know you might want to make a website for Maddie's bling shop do you have any other goals for your business you know any anything you want to accomplish in the future even if it's like years down the road you know where are you hoping to take Maddie's bling shop well I know this sounds a little crazy 
but I kind of want my business to be as big as like Pandora or some big jewelry business mm-hmm. like that because I feel like if I start now and I just keep working and improve my jewelry because like sometime in the future I want to release necklaces and bracelets and all that different stuff I feel like if I just keep working I kind of want my business to be as big as big jewelry stores and stuff like that I don't know I just really hope I can be as big as those and if not I just want a little tiny shop on the side of the road or something like that yes I love that and you know it's great to have those big dreams and where you want to take it and it also seems you're also taking it one step at a time right like you're not getting overwhelmed with where you want to take the business you're you're taking it one day at a time and look at the success you've already had and who knows where you, where you can take it i think it's it's great to have those big dreams too so do you have throughout this journey although it has only been a few months from may which is also insane um do you have any advice for say what if you know one of your friends has an idea and wants to start a small business what are some pieces of advice you would give them? What what have you learned along the way? Well, just to make sure it's something you're passionate about, because mm-hmm. if I were to start a business painting stuff, that's not really something I'm passionate about. I'm not a big fan of painting because I'm not good at it. Maybe my friend would be passionate about painting. Make sure it's something you're passionate about because you don't want to sit there and do something you don't like because then it's not worth it. And then also make sure you put a profit into it. I had to put a profit into it. So make sure you put a profit into it as well. Awesome. Awesome advice. Yeah, I think it's important for for people to understand that you might have to put some money into your small business, right? You probably will have to at first and that might be a risk. But if you believe in it and if you're passionate about it, you have to have to go for it. Yes. How did you, you know you were passionate about jewelry making? We may have talked about this, but were you always passionate about jewelry in general or did you just try it in May and really liked it? Well, I don't know if this counts as jewelry, but I used to make rainbow bracelets. To me, that's jewelry because it's like bracelets and I used to make like little chokers or rings and I sold those in like third grade too. <laughs> wow. So yeah, that's where it really started then all the way back in third grade. Yeah. So do you think, Maddie, that when you go to high school and even college, which I know is is so far down the road, but do you think you'll always be passionate about running a business and learning more about entrepreneurship um, and how to run run a small business? Do you think that's just something that's like true to who you are? Yes, I know it'll be a little tricky because tomorrow I start school. I feel like it's going to be a little tricky and definitely in high school and college because you have a lot more work and then I have to have like a side job like at a grocery store or something. (laughs) But I know it'll be a little more tricky than what it is right now because it's only been a few months and this is just over quarantine and summer break. But when I start school, I know it'll be very tricky. No, that makes sense. I think though what what's to your advantage is because you're starting at such a young age, like you can only get better from here, right? You're only going to keep growing and succeeding and you're starting so young. And so by the time you're in college, like who knows what, what small business you'll be running, right? Or where Maddie's bling shop will be. I think it's just great to start, to start so young because now you can experiment with things and just keep improving. Yeah. My last really big question for you, Maddie, is in this moment, what would you say is your proudest accomplishment? And this can be related to Maddie's Blink Shop, or it doesn't have to be related to your business at all. And it can be from five years ago or from yesterday, right now in this moment, you know, what is your proudest accomplishment? I think it's just how big my business has grown. Because when I first started in May, I thought I would just be doing it for two months just to make a little bit of cash to get like a good Christmas present for my mom or my brother. But I didn't know it would be this big. I didn't know I'd get better packaging and better materials and all this. All I know is that I'm very proud with how my business has grown because I've made a lot of money, a lot more than I thought I would. and. I thought that when I started this, I thought it'd be popular to kids my age, 
but it's not. <laughs> it's popular to adults. Mm -hmm. And a couple of my friends have purchased from me, but it's mainly adults. And I'm, I don't know. I'm just really proud with how big this has gotten because I did not expect this. <laughs> Congratulations on on all your success, Maddie. I can't wait to see where where you take Maddie's bling shop. I think you'll go amazing places. I'm <laughs> Thank you. Yeah, you're welcome. So before we we sign off, where can people find Maddie's bling shop? Like, what's your Instagram and Facebook? It's just Maddie's bling shop on Instagram and Facebook. I also have an email, which is Maddie's bling shop at gmail.com. Okay, perfect. Well, I hope everyone checks out Maddie's Bling Shop. And Maddie, before we sign off, is there anything else on your mind? Anything I didn't ask you that you want to share with our audience? I do have a new release coming out. Ooh. It is, but it's coming out very soon. Okay, I'm excited. I'm excited. I'll wait for the announcement on your Instagram. Awesome. Well, thank you so much for chatting with me today, Maddie. I loved hearing your story and your journey and advice. And I can't wait to see where, where you take Maddie's bling shop. Thank you for having me. Now, before we sign off on this episode, Maddie's mom, Sandra, wanted to share a bit about her perspective on Maddie's business. She, she kept on giving me credit for some stuff. <laughs> but when Madeline approached me with this idea, and I was like, this is ridiculous. I'm not spending any money on it. You want to do this, you have to spend your own money and do your own research, you know, because in my mind, it was only going to last for a little while and then it'd be over. And so she did. She spent, I, I didn't give her any money. And Maddie has two moms. And so that's why she pointed out the LGBT community. Um, so we didn't give her any money and I didn't help her with the research at all. And then once she was done, that's when I let her start ordering. And like the packaging, she did the logo. She teamed up with one of her friends and gave her free products so that her friend would give her, um, make a logo for her. And so, I mean, I help her with the little things, like maybe the packaging or, or the social media, but she does all the hard work. Oh, that's so incredible. Yeah, thank you for adding that. Yeah, her and her... Me and her other mom are really proud of her and how hard she's worked for this and basically has done it herself. It's just incredible, right? I mean, aren't most people your age, Maddie, just like playing video games all summer, <laughs> right? Like, <laughs> yeah, <laughs> you are going to come back to school and they're going to ask you what you did this summer and you're going to say, well, I started my own business. Like, what the heck? That's so cool. <laughs> Yeah. When she wanted to pair up with a nonprofit, you know, like that was her idea. And right. She had to do the research to do that. And I just think it's great for a 12 year old to learn how to give back to her com community responsibly. Mm -hmm. Exactly. Yeah. Like Maddie, you could have said, yeah, I'm going to take all the, all the profits and buy what I want with the money, but you're deciding to give back to your community and also putting your money back into your business. Yeah, she hasn't spent any. She's been saving it. I love it. It's very inspiring, Maddie. It, it, it's just very cool to see someone pursuing their passions just so strongly and just doing it, right? You just said, yeah, I have this idea. I want to do it. Let's do it. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Very, very cool. Well, again, Maddie, thank you so much for, for chatting with me today. Thank you. Awesome. Thank, thank you, Maddie.